Hi, Eukster Brown here. I'm just uh, going to go through a lesson on Islander Uke. Uh, this last week I bought a new one, or at least I got it in the mail the other day, and uh, I want to explain why I bought it. Uh, there were two of them running simultaneously on eBay. Uh, one was in very good condition, and it was sold for over $200, $230, I think. This one I paid $40, and that included shipping, around $40. Bucks. That included shipping. Now, what made it sell for $230 in very good condition? Well, it wasn't the plain old brown one like this one. It was one of the lesser uh, found colors, and that is bright green. Now, this one I bought knowing that it had damage, and we're going to be covering that in this video is to kind of see what makes up an Islander. The nut I knew was cracked, and I have that. It's in two pieces. I was able to jimmy it out of there. We'll, we'll, uh, we've got a little friend called Super Glue for this stuff because it works great on this instrument. Um, and I know I also noticed that the fretboard was a little bit loose, so I started wiggling it, wiggling it, wiggling it, wiggling it, and pretty soon it, it came off. And you can see uh, by itself how, how uh, weak this neck is. If I keep it up, I'm going to end up breaking it. Um, if you look inside, you can see it has some ribs there to give it some extra strength around the narrowest part of the neck. And on this one, you may as well see it says, Designed by McAfee, where this one does not say that. See, you find all these little uh, oddities about this one they were made. You can also see the crest is darker on the green one. So there's always something different on some of these. Otherwise, it looks like the, uh, you know, you can see the bridge covers the same pretty much. Even the sound hole covers the same. Um, but we're going to be covering on uh, repairing this. First thing I want you to remember is on the last video I told you that you can't just replace these pegs. I knew that it had all four pegs. It had all four pegs that was missing two with knobs so I'm I have to get replacement screws from the hardware store but it you can't make a regular peg fit in these holes here's the uh, McFerry headstock and this is a standard tuning peg and it will not fit in that hole here's the McFerry peg and of course it's going to fit now I'll try to get a shot here up close so that you can see it the diameter difference between these and without measuring them with a micrometer or anything Here's, here's the, uh, let's see, I'll try to hold it up here. There's the diameter difference. Quite a big difference. So if you buy a used Islander, make sure that it has all four tuning pegs. It's going to be very difficult to fix it otherwise. I think if you were to try to run a drill through here, you just shatter it all to pieces. And you might be able to make it work somehow or another, but uh, that's the thing. The white knobs we can fix. Um, so I, we popped this off. We cleaned it up, or we're going to clean it up. You can see some of the old glue residue. There's some pock marks on here, which I believe cause when they store it with other plastic uh, types of plastic. I think plastic against plastic sometimes has weird reactions. So I'm not sure I'm going to be able to fix that, but we may be able to clean it up and make it look nicer. And so I'll, we'll go through this step by step how I do this. And the first step is I'll be just taking some dish soap on a toothbrush, giving it a good wash over. Uh, and letting it dry good. And from there on, we'll uh, cover it step by step on what I do to repair this Islander, and we'll see how good it sounds when we string it up. A couple tips I want to give here before I get started, and that is uh, I like using wax paper on my work surface instead of newspaper because the super glue or whatever adhesive you use, it's easier to remove your work from it than it is newspaper or any other product. The glue doesn't stick in it, it'll, it'll be able to peel off the wax. The other thing, when you're using super glue, Keep the fingernail polish remover handy. Uh, this is my wife's, not mine. Um, and so keep it keep it ready. And I always keep it right on a cotton ball. Have a cotton ball ready with it on. And that way, when you run into the inevitable either over drool or whatever from the super glue, you'll be able to uh, address that. I glued the nut. That came out nice and neat. And when I was uh, after I washed it, um, I squirted some super glue up into the headstock because that was coming off. That's all nice and sealed. And after I washed it and I, it sat dry, I noticed that I had a crack in the back because water seeped out. And so I just ran some super glue along the back, took the cute, or took the uh, cotton ball, wiped off the excess, and then in the inside, I you could hold it over a bright light and you can see sometimes that where that crack is just dribble it in the inside and it'll run down that crack and fits it up nice and tight so you get no flex there now what we're going to do is we're going to address the um, fretboard and uh, the fretboard has a zero fret so i want to be able to get or yeah, zero fret there so i want to get this as far down as i can seated in its original position so once i get the glue on there i'm going to have to work kind of fast and i'm going to just kind of put it in a few locations and uh, we'll hopefully we'll get this good and in, in, uh, done. Here we go. Uh, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. 
A little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. A little bit along here. A little bit more right up there. Okay, now I have to work fast. Pushing it down. So far my hands aren't stuck, which is a good thing. for a couple seconds see what happens okay we're back at it and I got the uh, tuners put in and the way I did that was put them in like normal but first I went to Ace Hardware and I bought new finishing washers to dress up the front a little bit and I got the screws that I needed to fit the backs at Ace Hardware you can still buy parts by the piece so I think it cost me 50 cents for the parts um, the knobs of course came off the old tuners that wouldn't fit into the hole and uh, now the, the diameter of that pin is a little big, so I used a little invention called Scotch Tape. Wrapped about uh, five or six uh, wraps around the post, snipped off the end, put on the other washer on the back, uh, slid on the knob, it felt nice and snug, so I put in the new screws, and there we are, we're ready to, to string it. Uh, and I don't know how you string, but a lot of people will send it through, uh, tie a fancy knot, all I do is I, I send it through once, then I bring the string around again, and I send it through that hole one more time, and uh, you don't need a knot then. I've never had any problem with this. I double knot the one that fits in the bridge, slip it in the bridge, and uh, send it through twice, and we're ready to string it. So we'll string it up the rest of the way and see where we're at. Okay, we've got it strung up, and we got it tuned up. We'll give her a little whirl here. instead of 240 bucks hope you learned some tips by the way we couldn't get rid of the pockmarks on the front but I've got them too so there you have it